Hey everybody, it's Derek Clement from CodeOpinion.com. What does a vertical slice architecture look like in code? And how does it compare to a clean architecture? I'm going to refactor a sample application to use a vertical slice architecture and provide some insights along the way. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design. So if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. If you find this video helpful at any point, make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. So the key point about clean architecture or layered architecture or anything similar to it is the direction of dependencies. So you can see here as the dependencies are pointing inwards, that means at the very core, what is called entities here, or you may think this of your actual core domain where your business logic lives, it does not have any dependencies. On the outside of that, you have use cases. This is where you may have some application logic and it's pointing to your core, to your entities and so forth as you go out. It doesn't necessarily need to be these exact um, layers, if you will, but this is the general concept of your dependencies pointing inward. So if we were to take these similar concepts and display it a little bit differently, is we have the web UI, an infrastructure, an application, and a domain. When we're talking about vertical slices, really what we're talking about is instead of having those layers, really what we're thinking about is take the individual pieces from each one of those layers and segregate them to a direct to a feature. So we're thinking vertically, not horizontally, meaning we're not thinking about all these different layers in the direction of dependencies. We're thinking about what are all the things that belong to a particular feature and get really narrow on what that feature is and contain all those things within that, the, within that feature, within that vertical slice. So a different way of looking at that vertical slice is we're going to have a top layer that ultimately really isn't anything that we own. It's going to be something like our web host. So in the example that I'm using, this is going to be ASP.NET Core. It's not going to contain any controllers or entry points into our actual application, but it's going to be simply ASP.NET Core, it's middleware, but things like MVC or Razor Pages, et cetera, that's not going to live in that particular project. We're just using the web host for being a web host. The features is what contains everything that we care about. That's going to be our application logic. And then if we actually have something relevant to our domain that we want to share across features, we can do that. Now, again, this is very narrow. You'll see that there's no infrastructure. There's no separate projects related to any of that because our features are very narrow and then we're going to limit them in scope of what relates to each other and what's using a particular domain, we're not so concerned about abstractions. We're not so concerned about abstracting things like our database because it, we're going to use our implementation. Say in this case, we're using entity framework in my example. We don't need to abstract entity framework. We're just going to use it. The reason being is because if we have something that we're going to depend on like entity framework that is testable to create another abstraction on top of that is just more work for very little benefit. The reason being is because if you need to change implementation from Entity Framework to something else, you're just doing it at a feature level. You're not doing it at a layer level. So one last thing before I jump into code, and if you ever watch my videos on loosely coupled monolith, this will make a lot of sense, but I'll jump back to this at the end of the video, which is you can see at the top here, I have a web host, which I showed earlier, but I also have something separate with a message processor. I'm not showing this in my videos, but it's just to illustrate that these are different ways to invoke features. So maybe our message processor is just using a messaging library that's talking to a message broker or a queue, and it's invoking features. And we have certain features that maybe are sharing a particular domain model. Maybe we have a separate free feature here that's not even using the domain model at all. It's just using particular uh, data model. But this is, again, take, keeping this in mind as I'm going through explaining uh, the rest of my kind of refactoring here. All the code I'm showing is available to my developer level members. If you're interested in joining my channel, go to my channel, click the join button for more info. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to merge infrastructure and application core. The reason being, again, is that infrastructure contains implementation for things like our database context, services, and logging. And because I want to keep these things all things together, I'm not so concerned about having them as separate layers for direction and dependencies. I'm actually going to merge them together. So let's kind of move stuff over here. So I'm going to move the data folder over. I'm going to move identity over. Logging. And then services, since there's already a folder for that, we'll move our email sender just to that particular folder. And then we're just gonna completely remove the infrastructure project. All right, so now we're basically down just to application core and our web. So I'm in the web project now, and we can see we have controllers 
And we also interestingly have this features folder, which has my orders, and this is actually using Mediator. So we're gonna move some of this around here. I don't want the web project to be, have any necessarily any logic in it. I actually wanna move all of it to the application core, including the controllers. So let's do that. All right, so what I'm gonna do is in the application core, I'm gonna create another directory called features. Inside of this, I'm going to create a subfolder called orders. And then the thing I'm gonna refactor here is actually getting the list of your orders. So I'm gonna create a new class called get my orders because that's what it, the actual query was called beneath it. So what I wanna do here is I actually just want this particular route. So I'm actually gonna copy the entire class. Let's move it over to get my orders. I'm gonna paste this in here. And I'm gonna get rid of the detail route because we don't really particularly care about that. We'll just leave this. And we'll add all our using statements. And now we can see that we are missing some types here, get my errors. So let's move that order, uh, that type over, that class, because it also exists in the web project. So get my orders, that's where this type existed. Let's completely cut this out. Go back over here and we're gonna paste it here. We're gonna call this the get my orders query. And we'll get that. We're actually, let's rename get my orders controller. Rename that as well. And then this one was, we don't wanna use the template here. So we'll use order my orders, I believe is the name. All right, so now we have this view model that we need to move over. All right, so let's do that. So order view model, that belongs order view model. So I'm gonna move that all the way up to our features folder. And this one's actually, this view model is used actually in a couple different places. So I'm actually gonna move the order items too, cause it's used. Let's keep going up, we'll add it here. So we'll add our using statements. Now the thing here is that generally I don't actually recommend for the most part ever returning a list um, from a particular view model, especially if you're gonna use this result as a result of a web API where you're just gonna be serializing it. In this case, it's actually being used in a razor view. Um, but I actually don't recommend returning a list. And the reason being is because if you do wanna add something to that, you're kind of botched. You can't really do it. You're gonna to have to return the type. So I usually like creating a root type that'll have the list in. So let's add that. So let's create one. So get my orders view model. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this and then we're gonna change this all around so that the request is actually the get orders view model. And then we will pass the orders into here. So again, I'm doing this simply because if you wanna add something, you can do it to this root level. Um, but if you're just returning an IE numerable of orders, you can't really have anything to the root. All right, so now I'm gonna move the actual handler. So this is empty, we can delete this, and then let's move the handler over. So I'm literally gonna cut and paste this entire thing and go back to my orders. Gotta add our handler, get my orders handler. And then we can see now that it's our query and our query now returns not the IE numerable, but rather it returns the view model. So we'll replace that signature here. Uh, replace the signature here, and then we'll add our references. All right, so now the only thing we gotta change is, now we gotta return our new get my view model, and then I can just specify the orders in this list. Oops, typos. All right, so that's fixed. So now all we really have to do is move over our view. All right, so let's go get that view, my orders, paste it into our folder, and actually I'm gonna rename this just so it aligns. I'll call it get my orders. 
And then I'm gonna change this to reference that path. You could do this with conventions, but for simplicity's sake, new features, orders, get my orders.chtml. And now we have moved basically everything order. We have our controller, we have our view model, we have the query, and we now have the handler um, to process that particular order. So everything will work just as it is before, except now everything's together in the same location. You can do this as separate files if you don't prefer, if you prefer having like kind of a class profile for your query and your handler. I prefer everything having in the same file because then I'm just in here. If I know I'm doing something with my uh, get my orders, I know I'm going into one file and maybe I guess including the razor view. So the last thing I want to touch on, on at least moving this and consolidating this into one central place is dealing with this actual handler. And it's doing a couple things that I just have no interest in. One is it's using a repository to get out the list of orders. The thing with this is that this repository, although it's using a specification with a specification pattern to limit um, base by user to get the right orders, it's returning the entire order set. When the reality of it is, if you actually look at what's actually being used in this view, it's not using the entire order view model. It's using really just like a summary. So if I look at the actual view here, when we're iterating over everything, we're not showing any of the items. We're showing kind of a uh, the order number, the date, a total, a status, that's it. However, if you actually look at the code, the thing we have to build up includes the items, the pictures, the shipping address. None of this is relevant for the actual view. So this is often the problem I see with using a repository, especially for queries and the query side, is I would much rather use the database directly instead of using a repository and get the data I need to project that to a view model that is relevant for the view. Whether this be a razor page, whether you're serializing this with a web API, it's still the same thing. Way back when, if you ever wrote SQL directly, um, most people always said, don't write a select star. This is writing a select star. This is, it's never about, it's not even about pre-optimization, is that you're using something to get a whole bunch of data back that you don't actually need. Get to the simplest path. So just, I'm gonna change this. So we're gonna create a view model specifically, that's a summary for the orders, rather than using this shared order view model. So what that looks like is, I'll just save you again some hassles. We're gonna get rid of the order repository. We're going to add in our catalog DB context. We're gonna reference it directly, getting rid of our repository, add our using statement. So now I'm using the database directly, getting orders, including our items, so we can count our sum of total. We're doing our where, which is again, what a specification is, and we're doing a select, which is basically a projection on that order summary and returning it. So again, the simplest path to get to the data you need. The reason why I don't particularly need the repository here, and I generally don't use repositories for, again, for queries, is to get the after the data that you need. The thing even with the specification is that it's an abstraction over everything with entity framework. So you can have a centralized place to say, this is how I want to um, filter out this particular data. The thing is, is that specification was a NuGet package, a part of this project, and I can understand having an abstraction so that you own the abstraction, but the problem is you don't own the abstraction. It's an abstraction on top of an abstraction of link in entity framework. So get rid of the abstraction entirely. Why do I prefer concrete implementations rather than abstractions? Because this is so narrow. If you, again, I have large projects that do exactly this. If you need to change, for example, that you're no longer gonna use entity framework, then change this particular handler. You can do that a handler at a time. You do not need some abstraction over top of another abstraction that's gonna be used in multiple places and have some high degree of coupling that if you change that thing, it changes everywhere. Again, I would rather have things centralized in, or I should say consolidated to individual places so that you can define what the dependencies are per a given feature. So to visually summarize in code now, I have one file called get my orders, which is in the application core under feature orders. It contains my controller, my view model, any sub view models are part of that, the actual mediator query and its relevant handler. It's, and then the razor view is living directly aside of it. 
If I need to go into one place, I'm not jumping through projects, jumping through folders like I was before. I don't have this feature folder and this view models folder with a view in a separate place, then it going to the application core and the infrastructure. I'm not dealing with those abstractions. I have a centralized place that are finding its dependencies. I'm using complicated implementations where appropriate, like Entity Framework, like I feel here. It's just a central place where this feature is organized. Everything is here. So the last thing I want to touch on is I was showing this slide at the very beginning saying I was going to allude to it a little bit more. And you start thinking, about, okay, well, if I have feature explosion, where does it end? And it really does come about boundaries. So in my loosely coupled monolith video, which I'll have a link in the description, is that you're really breaking things up by feature and what they actually commonly share. That could be in this particular case, say there's two features, that's not realistic for this diagram, but let's say you have a dozen features that particularly relate to a particular domain model that you have, and it has its own actual database. Then you have some other feature set that maybe doesn't have, maybe it's very crud in nature, you don't really wanna have a domain model, you're just having more transaction scripts and you just have a data model, and it has its own database that it interacts with. So again, this is the concept I have of the elusive couple monolith, where we have particular boundaries that don't communicate directly with other boundaries. They're using messaging to do so. And then you have these top level entry points, like a web host, which is ASP.NET Core or whatever the case may be. And you have a message processor that's communicating with your message broker to then push those messages to the relevant features. If I were to continue refactoring, I'd be doing the exact same thing. There's a details page, like an order details page. I'd be doing the same thing. I'd be moving the controller, the query, the view models, the handler, and realizing what is appropriate for that particular handler, what it actually needs to do. Does it need a repository? Does it not need a repository? Would I rather simplify it and then just use the actual uh, database directly like Entity Framework in this particular case and get the data out directly that I need? Maybe it was a particular command where I actually need the repository, needs a relative word here, to actually get out a particular data model. Maybe I actually have a domain model that a few different features are, sh are sharing. That's fine. It's not that a feature can't share other concerns with other things. It's just being aware of what you're coupling to. So you're coupling in within an individual feature and defining what those dependencies are. So again, thinking more narrow and feature in organizing code that way, rather than organizing and thinking about layers. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.